I tell my students that reading music is like reading a whole other language. So let's bust this language apart with four easy steps and we'll soon be start reading all of our favourites. Hi there, I'm Kylie and we love to share easy tips and tricks to inspire students to learn the love of music here at our music studios. My nine-year-old student Bella said that she wanted to learn expressions by Helen Jane Long and she said that she wanted to understand music notes. Bella hadn't done a lot of note reading before so in her lesson we covered these four easy steps and she was soon zooming around the piano. Now if you're surprised by step number three then please leave a comment. I said to Bella here we have five lines called the staff. On these five lines we can create a treble clef and it was originally called a G clef. If a note is on this line, then we call it a G. Let's draw a treble clef. We start here on our G, go around like a snail shell, then up and down with the tail. I also told her that the treble clef helps us to read high notes for the flute, the trumpet, the top end of the piano, ladies voices, and other high sounding instruments. Then we created a bass clef, originally called an F clef. We stepped through how to draw the bass clef and noted that there were two dots either side of the F line. So any notes on this line would be called F. I then added the bass clef helps us to play the low sounding notes, like with the tuba or with the double bass or the bottom end of the piano or manly sounding voices and other low instruments. I explained that when we join these two sections together, called the grand staff, then we can read high and low music for two hands, like on the piano or keyboard. Between the two sections, we put a baby line. We can call this a ledger line. And I told her that the note on this line would be called middle C. These landmarks of middle C, G and F can be used to identify notes on our music. Next, we chatted about our music alphabet. Bella knows that there are only seven notes to remember on the piano. These are A, B, C, D, E, F and G. There are no H's, there are no Z's or T's. So I explained that to read music there is only A to G and then we start again. If we go backwards in the alphabet then we go down the music. G, F, E, D, C, B and A. We then move this idea down to our feet. Bella sang with me up the alphabet as we stepped up the music staff. Then we sang down the notes as we stepped back down the staff. Traditionally, teachers have broken note naming into four different acronyms, including the treble lines, the treble spaces, the bass lines, and the bass spaces. However, I found that many students couldn't remember these acronyms, or where they started, or for what clef they were using. Starting with middle C as our landmark, I encouraged Bella to create her silly sentence to start from here. Her notes going up from middle C were cats eat grass before doing farts. There are always farts. Downward from middle C were cats aren't funny digesting bubble gum. Because Bella thought of her own words, she didn't forget them once. We could have also done a similar process with the spaces that come between the lines. But Bella knew that if she went one note higher, then she would be stepping up one note in the alphabet. If she went one note lower on the music, then she would be stepping down one alphabet letter. So knowing a silly sentence for the notes on the lines was enough information for Bella to be able to feel comfortable to work out any note on the grand staff starting from her middle C. Before we check out our final step for today, then if you're enjoying the content, I'd love for you to subscribe and a thumbs up is always the best compliment. I said to Bella, although we need to work out the starting notes at different places through our piece, we don't have time to work out every note name and then tell ourselves to play it. When we read music, we actually match how our notes move around the staff to how we can move them around on our instrument. First, Bella stepped up from middle C. We identified that a step moves from line to space or space to line. Bella noted that a skip goes from line to line or space to space and also that we can repeat the same note. 
Bella and I turned this into a game where she raced around to move up and down and steps and skips and then I'd ask her the note name. Then she had me doing the moves and saying the note name that we arrived on. She called up a step, down a skip, up a skip, same note, up a step, and what's the name of that note? Finally, we flicked this game back to the piano and played the same game of the steps and skips and note naming on the piano keyboard. After this, Bella could now understand how to find her way around the music. She could find her starting notes. She could also find how to move. She could move up and down and begin to read along her music. I love this quote from Mary Lou Cook. Creativity is experimenting, growing, taking risks, breaking rules, making mistakes, and having fun. So may you be inspired to create very silly sentences and experiment with fun ways that grow your note reading skills and a deep love for music.